Canada is already utilizing renewable energies like solar, wind, and hydro. And now, researchers want to see if we can tap into geothermal energy from volcanoes. Yes, you heard right, volcanoes. People are surprised that there's volcanoes in Canada. The last explosive eruption was about 2,400 years ago from a, a Mount Meager volcano, kind of just uh, near Pemberton in British Columbia. You know, volcanoes in Canada are, are mostly in British Columbia and then extending up into the Yukon. If you're looking for geothermal energy, certainly it's an interesting place to look. Although generating energy from volcanoes might seem futuristic, many countries have been utilizing this renewable resource for years. I mean, Iceland is the prime example. I mean, it sits on a volcanic island and it produces most of its energy is from the volcanic systems on, on Iceland. There's really a whole ring of volcanoes that go all around the Pacific Ocean, you know, from the west coast of North America and South America and then around the east coast of, of Asia. And Canada is really the only country in that ring of fire that has yet to produce geothermal energy. So we kind of stand out uh, in the world for not yet uh, making use of that resource. Geothermal energy is generated by capturing heat from the earth. Water is pumped into holes that are drilled into the volcano and is heated by hot rocks that can be over 200 degrees Celsius. The heated water is then transported out of the volcano and turns into steam that spins a turbine to create energy. What we're trying to do is to better target, like, you know, where would you next drill? Now that we know the temperatures are, are good and the depths are reasonable, can we better image in the subsurface? It's kind of like taking a, a CAT scan or something, right? To find that sweet spot where you can drill to and, and produce enough fluids to extract that heat energy. The Canadian government is increasingly looking at energy alternatives to fossil fuels to meet national targets of lowering greenhouse gas emissions. We need more and more to meet this challenge of getting to, to net zero by 2050, so we really have to look at the whole spectrum of what's available now, because it's a, it's a daunting task. 